Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the IRL Xbox F1 League, brought to you in partnership with GT Omega, Driver61, and GridFinder.com, bringing you Season 13, Round 11 action from the Autodromo Nationale Monza circuit here in Italy. My name is Kieran Wright 92 and I am joined, as always, by the wonderful Tom the Noodle. Uh, good evening, Kieran. Ah, oh, Monza. What a track this is. Very, very fast-paced. I might suck at it, but oh boy, is it fun to watch. Last season through some absolute spectacular qualifying, a, a, spe a spectacular for, uh, qualifying session. That was a very, 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 very wet session. Um... <laughs> In which I think there were more boats than there were cars out there because it was supposed to be a dry session and so obviously they were running a very, very minimal aero package and obviously that wasn't going to cut it in the wet with part of Fermi and all that. Um, again, same as last year, one stop, medium soft, soft, medium whichever one you want to get more grip on. The medium soft is a little bit more powerful towards the end and may even be as competitive as the soft medium. Um, it can be a very, very, very strong uh, undercut here as well. 24 seconds the pit lane from in to exit. And yeah, again, you'd be looking at, I mean, the soft, maybe like 11 pit. Um, if you really want to initiate that early undercut, a 10. Um, and then, you know, like 15, if you go medium to soft, or 14, if you're looking to hit that undercut again. It is very, very personal preference here. Last year, if I'm not mistaken, it was Raza that done it. Uh, had damage lap one and took the hards to the final lap of the race when they eventually gave out in Ascari. And there were many many tears so maybe just maybe he can uh, rectify a wrong there tonight at Victus's Invictus Racing League's Xbox's third time here at Monza it is indeed for those who may have missed last week's race at Zanvoort it was of course Andrew and Matty that took you through the action there and it was Bot Gerbil who correct me if I'm wrong Dom broke the record for the most podiums in IRL Xbox history? Um, he did indeed, yeah. Um, I watched that race, it was a really good race. Congratulations um, to Botch Gerbil. Um, the statistic itself is that he's now on, if I'm not mistaken, 24 overall podiums, um, which is breaking the record, which was previously DJ Daniels with 23. There we go. So it was Botch Gerbil who did pick up that win. It was his only second win of the season for the Ferrari team. PSR Harry finished in second place for the Haas team. And Raza grabbed himself his fourth third place finish of the season and his fifth podium in seven races, rounding out the podium. So we will have a quick look at the driver's stand here. It is Botch Gerbil that does still lead the way. 24 points ahead of PSR Harry. More on Harry in just a second with Liverpool Ewan remaining in third, but he does trail Harry by 14 points. In terms of constructors, it is Ferrari sitting atop of the standings on 165 points and now have a significant 81-point lead over that Haas team with the Williams team a further six points back in third. From what we've been told, on this current form, Ferrari will wrap up the constructors' championships within the next couple of races at either Portimao or Spain. But my question for you, Dom, is with five races remaining this season, and by the looks of it, no PSR Harry, I believe he is going to um, miss out tonight due to prior commitments, the lead currently being 24 points. Of course, a win here in IRO is 15 points, plus the extra point for the fastest lap. So if Botch Gerbil can string it all together tonight, providing he races, he's not in the lobby at the moment. But if Gerbil can obviously win the race tonight with the fastest lap, it's going to be 40 points is the lead, with only four races to go. If that happens, do you think, one, Harry could come back, and two, is it possible? We're saying that the drivers are readying up and there doesn't look to be a botched gerbil in 
the lobby. We may so have a couple of late joiners. Um, but we may not be there. Yeah, no, in, in answer to your question, if, if Bot Jubble is here tonight and he does manage to take a win, uh, personally, from an outside point of view, he is uh, uncatchable. As long as he turns up to every race and Harry turns up to every race, even in the event that both drivers turn up to every race, he is uncatchable. Because Bot Jubble, even if Harry does turn up, is not going to go down without a fight and he is going to be looking to get those podiums, those P2s, those P3s, and he's going to be looking to catch and keep a, a decent, you know, if he can't get the wins, he'll be looking to damage limitation, just like Max did on the weekend at Qatar, rather than, you know, going all out for the win. He he took the, the, the knowledge that he wasn't going to win it and just sort of dampened the effect that Lewis was going to make in the, in the driver's standings, which is what I think Gerbil will do. If he can get that tonight, then it's just going to be damage limitation for the rest of the season, which is what he is really, really good at. And he proved that last season in um, the realistic performance when he managed to, if I'm not mistaken, just clutch out the, uh, the P3 in the um, in the driver's standings. And it was, again, just the same thing there. Driver, uh, just, you know, damage limitation. And it worked for him. We're looking at a dry session, Kieran which is the opposite of what we saw last season. And I think the wet session is what made it the spectacle and what made it as interesting. What do you think? Yeah, definitely. I mean, especially from a commentary point of view, it is always more fun to have a wet race just because it is slightly more carnage. Um, looking at the check-in information, and we are not going to have Botch Gerbil tonight, Dom. No Botch Gerbil racing tonight. Max has confirmed for us it is going to be dry-dry, so we've got a dry race as well. So no wet weather for Dom. Bit cloudy for the race, full sun for Quali. So it's going to be a hot one, Dom. But there is going to be no um, no rain, unfortunately. No wet stuff for Dom the Noodle to commentate on tonight. Sad Dom noises. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, but that does mean that tyre pressures are going to come into play here a lot, especially if it's dry, dry. Um... You want to run a really, really, really high tire pressure right Whoa, here. Oh, Koda! <gasps> we have had our first casualty on the outlap. MCD Koda coming through the second chicane, which for the life of me, I cannot remember the name of off the top of my head. And he's put it into the wall on the right-hand side of the track just before Lesmo 1. So that is our first casualty Raza here now, in, and you uh, can just about to see it. Oh, in commentary, in the session. That is uh, very unfortunate. Car, then. It is C. Russ is going to be the lead car. The driver formerly known as Stallion. For those who may have been with us last season. And I'm wondering, who is C. Russ? It is Stallion. For those who uh, were involved in Invictus last season. And hopefully the stream isn't going to lag. And give us the audio issues that plagued my weekend uh, <laughs> less on that so i'm um i'm looking at zeros on his outlap here and there is a lot of understeer in that car he's got i mean I, I say basic and it is pretty basic very low aero and as much straight line speed as possible which is kind of what you need but you do still need the car to turn it doesn't matter if you can do 210 212 miles an hour on the main straight if you can't take those corners any higher than 40 mile an hour then i mean you're just as slow as a Renault Clio. Bit harsh, Dom. I'm not wrong. 40 miles an hour is roughly the average speed limit in the UK, and if you're taking corners at 40 miles an hour, just to let you know, a bog standard Audi R8 can do that. There we go. But it's all in the driver's yeah. preference. It's all in the driver's preference. If he thinks that this is the setup that's going to work for him, and he thinks that he's able to control the understeer 27 lap race, plus the extra laps he's going to do in qualifying, then good on it. Interesting to see how it treats him. Um, and it's also interesting to see how other drivers are going to, uh, going to present their cars, especially with now taking that first lap look at um, C. Russ, the lead driver seeing what he's doing. Indeed. He's coming around the Parabolica now. 
coming up to the start finish line he's going to set the first lap time of qualifying it's going to be a 120.9 Let's see what Raza's doing. I think Raza has potentially backed out of this lap. He is going slightly more gingerly, and he has backed out of the lap. He is going into the pits. Yeah, Vinny Cousins uh, also invalidated his little lap. Did that a little bit a while ago on the medium compound tyre. And Liverpool Ewan, I think. Uh, no, we're on board with Matt. I don't know why the game said we were with Liverpool Ewan then. Vinny Cousin has just crossed the line. Lukey Do is the next person to cross the line and actually set a lap time. Vinny Cousin, as Dom said, did invalidate his lap, so we'll have to go again. Where is Matt? He's coming up to the Varianti Del Roja. This is the second chicken. I know I remembered it. I would remember it eventually. <laughs> <laughs> that initial moment of forgetting. What oh, I'm going to be doing that a lot tonight. <laughs> there's Nathan, there's Jamie, there's Jamie 29X coming around the final corner. Oh, that's strange seeing Jamie in something that's not a Red Bull. Jamie puts it third with a 121.928 in a Williams. So used to seeing that many Red Bull in the Williams tonight. Of course, he did take a step away from Invictus and he got or uh, took a little step onto the power. A little bit too much there. I threw it at turn one. And uh, clear the excursion. So Jamie is now reserving for Invictus for the remainder of this season. Had some more times come in. FE Mac goes P4 with a 21 7, and Max goes in with a 21 0. I think Vinny has invalidated his lap. Where's Nathan? Just coming through a scary now. Yeah, Nathan, a little bit of interesting play here. Um, so XHRC gave Nathan a tow all the way down the main straight, all the way through uh, the first chicane, all the way around turn three, down into the De La Rocha chicane, and then backed off just before. So he had a good first, good first sector. Now. It's only given him two tenths on his teammate, but those are the medium compound, and they aren't reliably the fastest tyre on the track. They aren't, but... Obviously, potentially looking to go for that medium soft, rather than going the other way around. But he has just given his teammate, XHRC, a toe, well. a toe around turn three. Would you look at that? Yeah. The Alpines are working together. This is something that other drivers will need to learn as the seasons go on. They re they will realise that it's not all about the driver's standings and that there is still a prize for the constructors. There is indeed. I think Joey is going to be the next car we've got that's going to cross the line on a lap. In fact, he's going to come into the pits. So let's just have a look. Where is Vinny Cousin at the moment? He's just come through the first two turns. Coming through the Curva Grande now. So let's go to XHRC. Who are going to be the next car? Should we go to line? He's about half a second up in his time at the moment. So it's going to be an improvement coming through from XHRC. But no, he's thrown that away. He's decided against it at the final second and has come back into the pits. Nathan going to follow him in. I think our lead car is now Raza, a man who I know, Dom, has impressed you quite a lot this season. He had really, really quick, and I'm probably going to get really excited by the time he's about to post. Um, he's been really, really quick, consistently on the podium. P3 is, uh, is a good number for him, and it's helping the Ferrari team as he puts it P3 as a 121-0. <laughs> now, that isn't Paul right now. But he still has time to go out again, and like I said, this is a one-stop strategy. You will not need another set of softs, and if you do need to rely on another set of softs, it's because there's a very late safety car, and to have a scrubbed set to go onto means that you don't have to worry about, you know, wearing them in. They are ready to go and ready to roar. So, I'd expect to see him come back into the pits now at the end of this lap and, you know, send it a little bit in a way. Um, like I said, he's a really good driver. And, and to be on the podium, 
I'd say the majority of the season, give or take, um, is very impressive. As someone who wasn't as consistent last season to be as consistent this season, he has taken a much, much bigger leap from um, from that. And I think it does have a lot to do with, like you said, his teammate, Botch Gerbil, who's doing really well at the moment. Um, not just being, you know, a, a really big factor taking that driver's title um, to the max and pushing past the 100 point um, point marker, but, you know, they're, they're bouncing off each other and they're working, they're helping work with each other for them, what works for um, the team as a whole. And it does lay on Mazda tonight to keep the Ferrari dream going, but if Ferrari can win tonight, that'll be... That would be one for the history box here, I think. There we go. So Hubbardy did put that car on fourth. And Vinny Cousin has just replaced Hubbardy in fourth place whilst Dom was giving you that a little bit of a, a talk about Raza and his thoughts. The Ferrari driver. Uh, Dom, I'm just going to get you to quickly check your WhatsApp, buddy. Uh, yeah, that's not a problem. I, I did see a message pop up. We've got Joey that's about to set a lap. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go on board with Joey and I'm going to let Dom talk you through a lap of Monza. Take away, Dom. Oh, I'm on board with him. Uh, we're expecting to hit about 210 mile an hour now into turns, uh, turns one and two. Um, late on the brakes, it is a very, very tight corner and it'll catch a lot of drivers out in turn one. Very tight one, two, chicane into the Curva Grande, which is flat out now down into... The Della Rosa chicane, which again is very tight, exactly like turns one and two, except the other way around. A very big runoff area this time, though. So, you're not in a runoff ramp, in a way. Uh, takes the left, right quite nicely. Now into Lesmus 1. Let the car slide a little bit, take a nice bit of the kerb. Now into Lesmus 2, again the same. Nice little apex, not too much of the kerb, otherwise you will beach the car and start to slow yourself down. Into the DRS zone, he has that DRS wide open into Ascari, the complex of the left, right, left. He may... Oh, he's just about kept it live, but it is a very, very tough complex of corners because you come into it so quick. You want to scrub the speed off, but not too much. You want to be at the right speed. Now, for each car that is different, especially with a different aero package, down into Parabolica now, which has been recently renamed, and I can't remember what the name of it is, but it will come back to me at some point in the stream all the way down to the very, very early start finish line, 121.9. We know where he lost that time. That would have been through Ascari, through the first yes. part of Ascari. It's a very dangerous complex well, of corners. Quite slowly. Um, There's Mac, FE Mac, what a time, 120.6, three tenths faster than anyone else on track at the moment in that Red Bull. Right. Uh, XHRC goes even faster. Yeah, five tenths faster than anyone on track currently. By the way, that's a bloody brilliant lap. Um, uh, uh, to have it all ones, you know, there's a zero, there's a one, and there's a uh, there's three ones, and there's two twos. You can't get much more simple than that, really. Um, one twenty point one two one is very very good. Um, and to see it from one of the teams is is impressive. Tonight, I was not expecting them to show up. We saw them struggle last season just a little bit. Um, both of the drivers here at uh, Monza. I keep going to call this Imola because Imola is a far superior track to Monza, but we move. Um, but yeah. <laughs> My liver... But, you would. Have we not come to an agreement that you're not allowed to be fast anymore? Liverpool, you went with a 119.974. First person to drop into the 19s this evening. Matt has put himself fourth with a 120.7. Uh, who else have we got out on track? We've got Raza coming up towards the Parabolica now. Is about tenth and a half up on his time at the moment. So he's into those one minute twenties. He's going up to the line now. It is a 20.7, three tenths faster. Third, a third of a second faster there for Raza. That moves him up into fifth place at the moment. 
dead. It's not too risky. It, it's not too risky for Barza to continue that pace. He's clearly very strong on that lap. He's improved, and if he's got the pace to improve in the third sector, that means he's got the pace to continue down that main straight, which will then get to uh, drive down into turn one, and he'll be confident. I've just beaten my personal best. I can do this. And before you know it, he could be the provisional well, Nathan. Fight. What Nathan HRX, a man who is 35, I think? Let me just double check the stat because I don't want to be wrong and make him seem horrid. Um, it actually hasn't given me a number tonight, but I, I think the number was something like 35, if I'm not mistaken, Karen. Uh, races without a podium, which is a hard break, but started P4 on track. Is a very very strong position, and if he's got his teammate right front right in front of him, which he does, he can force the for you in wide, which will give Nathan that inside line into turn one. Oh, indeed, we joined by Sun Pikachu with about three minutes left of qualifying. Uh, we're going to jump to Raza though. Who's he? In fact, no, we're going to jump to Vinny Cousin because Raza's coming into the pits. Vinny Cousin improves by just over a quarter of a second. But he, in fact, jumps uh, see Russ. And is now up into P7. Hubbardy coming up to the line now. No, he's going to come into the pits. Seerush goes third with a 120.5. As Luki Doo goes P9 with a 121.0. Mac is in the chat. Debut to be top wow to be top three wow and he's he has dropped down a little bit now he's p4 at the moment so but he's out on an out lap so ross may potentially be able to improve we've got a yellow flag in sector two just after the delarosa chicane i think it's just vinnie cousin going a little bit slowly maybe took a little bit too much or maybe even going to the gravel on the exit of delarosa don't know whether don was watching that or not uh no i wasn't i was watching this uh pile up uh, down turns four, five into Lesmus one, two. Uh, there's a good couple of drivers either on out laps or in laps, and they're all kind of just trying to get around without putting as, you know, either they try around without putting too much wear on the tires, or by looking down at some of the um, fuel loads on some of those cars, they do seem like they could go for another lap, and that's what's going to be crucial here is if they're not on an outlap and they are going for that other lap, that means they're going to be putting more wear on the tyres, but they're starting their lap now, which is pretty much a last grab at the title sort of thing. Um, very much a, a real-life-esque qualifying situation here, at least Q3 anyway. Jamie 29X going ninth place with a 120.908. Luke Doo is coming into the pit. We've got a few cars that are just starting laps now. I believe Nathan is Nathan's up there, so it's HRC that's coming up to Parabolica now. I think he is on in lap. Or is he going for two hot laps? No, I think he's gonna go for two hot laps. It was about 6.8 seconds slower on that lap, so maybe going for a back-to-back -back hot laps. So we'll keep an eye on XHRC. We've got about 30 seconds left in the session now. You know what? Because he wants a little bit more practice in running lead comms, Dom, run lead comms for the last 30 seconds of quality. Okay. Um, I am going to attempt to find who the first car in the line is real quick here. Uh, Levuyun's about to start his lap time. He's taken a very narrow entry into the... Uh, narrow exit, sorry. So that's going to... A little bit there. Um, there is another... Nathan's about to run out of time. He's not going to cross the line in time. So that's Nathan's probably done. And Mats is now out of qualifying as is. It is Joey that only goes P11 with the 21-1. Now we're looking f towards maybe Effie Mac. No, sorry. No. Nope. XHRC could put this provisional pole. Is it possible for an Alpine driver? He is. 
No. Failing from the lap. So we now look Rosa. down towards Raza, and Raza's going to come around the corner. Raza, again, a very strong driver, like I just previously said. And he's going to go down to the line. What's he going to do? P5. Good, good, strong lap. Very strong lap. Max. I'm Effie Mac. Mac is now on his. He slowed down. He slowed down. So it now goes down to Joey, who seems to be the last driver out on track. Cool. But he doesn't seem to have enough fuel left to get to the end. Maybe he does. No, he doesn't. He's going to hit fuel limiter before the end. So that is qualifying as it is. Um, unfortunately, not many drivers managed to get laps in then because they either ran out of fuel or they pushed too hard and hit the wrong curb. So as it stands, Liverpool Ewan is your pole sitter of Monza. He is, and he did improve, Dom. Don't know whether you did see it, but he did actually improve on his time. It was a 119.601 from Liverpool Ewan. Six tenths faster. No, sorry, well, ju just under half a second, sorry. No, over half a second, sorry, faster than XHRC. Uh, Mac, yeah, definitely agree. Ewan is unbelievable. He is rather sped, not going to lie. Indeed he is. Um, was very strong last season. Struggled to find his feet this season, but as the patches rolled in, he felt more comfortable with last year's handling model, and it's just worked for him again. And he's a very strong driver, knows what he's doing with his setups, knows what he feels comfortable with, and will not venture away from that. If it means he has to run more aero, he will, because he knows that he has the the ability to get the power down earlier than other people. And it's less of a, a mental safety thing, and more of a, I know I can do this. It's, it's mental fortification. If you believe in yourself, you will do well, and that's what he does. He believes in himself. He gets the car around the track faster than anyone else does. He does indeed. Don, do you want to give everyone a rundown of quality times? So, a quick rundown of the qualifying session here now at Monza. Liverpool um, Ewan is the only driver to hit the uh, the 19s with a 19.601 in the Alpha Tauri. Following him is XHRC. First time an Alpine driver has been on the uh, tops uh, the front row of the grid so far this season uh, with a 120.1 following him C. Russ and the Aston Martin and F.E. Mack on the second row of the grid Raza very strong in the Ferrari and Nathan HRX on the third row Matt and Vinny Cousin on the fourth Jamie and Hubbardy on the fifth Lukey Doo and Joey on the sixth and MCD Coda did not manage to get out past his outlap here at Monza so whilst he didn't set a time all but one of his tyres are fresh, and he does have free compound to pick from. He does indeed. Thank you, Dom. We did have some Pikachu join the session. You can see he is there at the bottom of the screen. Whether the game is going to allow him to take control of the car or not, I don't know. But I know he has said that he is struggling on his game at the moment. He can't see certain screens. He's got no HUD and he has no sound. Um, we're going to wait and see. There is a chance we may get some Pikachu, but we're not 100% sure. We've started very, very early here. Okay, so, so we do have that, um... we do have some Pikachu in the lobby, but we've got some Pikachu in the lobby in a Mercedes, so I think this could be a lobby reset. Um, only for the race, uh, for anyone that's never been here, whilst we've done a lobby reset before, um, the uh, starting, the the grid from qualifying will be recorded by someone, usually an admin. No, and... I think we're going. I think oh, we, we could be. Some people choosing the Mercedes, though, so he might be mentioning that as well. Um, and we may get the restart on that. Or they might just allocate the points back to his rightful seat down in... No, because he's an Aston Martin driver. And... Yeah. So, yeah, so he'd be given... The points in the Aston Martin instead of the Mercedes, so it'll be a bit of work for the admins, but it's not too bad. If we do have to do one though, it's a simple case of we just record what we got from qualifying, we just sort of reallocate the drivers into their grid slots, and no, we are going. Um, 
but yeah, usually it, it works like that. And then, for instance, some Pikachu, as is, will start at the back as he did not qualify. Indeed. Well, do you want me to plug, or are you going to attempt the plug this week? I'll let you attempt the plug this week. I am far too tired for that. <laughs> okay, so whilst these guys are on their outlap or on their uh, formation lap, I will quickly run you through the weekly schedule here for Invictus. We stream four days a week on YouTube and or Twitch. PlayStation F1 on a Monday night. Webo Red 5 and Lightning take you through the action on the YouTube channel. Tuesdays, same time of us on the YouTube channel. It is Malk and Living Wall taking you through PlayStation F2. Here on the Twitch channel, however, it is, of course, the combination of myself, Dom, Andrew, and Matty taking you through Xbox F1. Wednesday nights, three streams, or sorry, two streams for your viewing pleasure, both on YouTube. PlayStation F3 streamed by JPH. And the other dream team of Invictus. Guys, if you haven't watched a PC F1 stream, Go and watch one. Cam and Fozzy are fantastic at what they do. They've got their own graphics. They know how to do everything properly. And then on Thursday nights, we go realistic with PlayStation. Realistic performance. Tim and Malk take you through the action there on YouTube. All races start at 8 p.m. UK time. And... I will quickly give you the plug on the social media. So if you guys do want to get involved in the conversation, follow on Twitter at InvictusRL and at InvictusRL or Xbox using the hashtag, hashtag InvictusRL to get joined into the conversation. Instagram.com forward slash Invictus Racing League is where you need to go if you want to hit us up on Instagram. And then InvictusRacingLeague.com is where you go to get involved in the racing we are about to get going and in the IRL Xbox F1 League brought to you in partnership with GT Omega, Driver61 and GridFinder.com. All we wait for now, all those are those five famous red lights. Only problem uh, is we, we may be waiting not for them. get them just yet because... Some Pikachu's glitched car is unfortunately driving around normally. So um, the lobby reset that you um, suggested earlier, Dom, may well be happening. Yeah, some Pikachu's um, car seems to be doing practice laps. So we will wait to see what the admins say. Um, but we've got a funny feeling if he doesn't form in behind the pack as usual it will be a lobby reset yeah, which means top 10 will have to start on softs and everyone will have to start with the exact same setup that they were previously given or previously chose to use as of the start of qualifying I say pre-set or set up <laughs> you just say set up or dump don't worry so we're just going to see now whether some Pikachu's car does line up on the grid. It's straight through everyone else. It is going to be a lobby reset. Oh, he's he doing is laps. not slowing down. I think we are going to have to have a lobby reset. Oh, he's doing laps. And it's not even him that's doing laps. It is definitely just the AI. querying with the admins. Oh. Oh, he left and... Fixed itself. Um, and his lights are. Oh, yeah, here we actually, go. Um, are, are we racing? I think we. This is very, very strange. It is. Um, and Liverpool. No, good at Matt's, <laughs> Matt's, Matt's has confirmed it is a lobby restart. It is going to be say, a lobby restart. In in so Matt has retired from the session. It is going to be a lobby restart, guys. So just bear with us for just a few moments. Um, as. That was a very, very strange decision. Oh. Uh, I, I mean, I know it's a lobby guys, reset, If but... you can hear us, please retire from the session. Xbox F1 guys, if you can hear us on the stream, please retire from the session. It is going to be a lobby restart. Oh, that is a shame. Also, I'd like to point out that um, Jamie29 and Xbox, he was doing his uh, opening lap. 
did do himself a little bit of a Pierre Gasly and went straight on at the Curva Grande. Eh, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Except I think Jamie managed to get out of it slightly more alive than, than Pierre himself did. <laughs> Just going to wait for the confirmation that the new lobby is done. Waiting for the new lobby to be created. So just bear with us for just a moment, ladies and gents. We do apologise for the slight delay, unfortunately. We did have that little glitch in the Matrix. Just waiting for the notification that we are about to... Rejoin a new lobby. Oh, that that was uh, such a that lobby was such an accident that they've sent the uh, the emergency services to come and fix it over with you, Kieran. <laughs> they have indeed. You can probably hear that from my mic. So the new lobby is open. Let me just do that. Send the invite over to Dom. Ah, oh, I do love a good invite. There we go. Right, we are back in the lobby now. So we will go as normal. And uh we can we can go we can go a little bit a little bit smoother now. Um a little bit calmer in all of the uh in the plugs and all of that that we normally do pre-race. because um, it is obviously gonna take these guys a little while to set up the lobby because the admins have to set a custom grid now following on from where everyone in qualifying you also mean so we need every driver not... in before they set that well they can set it with the drivers they've got but every time a new driver gets added they have to then reshuffle that driver into their position which can be a bit of a pain in the backside but it's all for your entertainment and their fun as well indeed it is the case so what i will quickly do is whilst we are waiting for this i will quickly give you guys the rundown one more time of the Invictus weekly schedule just because I did have to rush it first time round and I know there would probably be a few more people that uh, need to know what needs to be known. So, Invictus Racing League stream four nights a week here on Twitch or over on our YouTube channel. All races start at 8 p.m. UK time. And the schedule is as follows. On a Monday night, it is Weber Red 5 and Lightning taking you through the action in PlayStation F1. On a Tuesday, at the same time as us here on Twitch, we have got Malk and Living Wall that take you through the action on the YouTube channel in PlayStation F2. Of course, there is the combinations of Dom, myself, Andrew, and Matty that will take you through Xbox F1 here on Twitch. We are the only Invictus stream on a platform other than YouTube as much as Invictus higher ups and powers that be wish us to move to YouTube we're not leaving Twitch we're staying loyal to the Twitch we're not gonna leave you can't make us leave uh, I mean I don't think it's more that I mean it means that Xbox is exclusive to Twitch which means that exactly. Twitch becomes your go-to place to watch Xbox it's the home of Xbox IRL Indeed. Wednesday nights, two streams for your viewing pleasure. PlayStation F3, JPH99 takes you through the commentary on that. And then, as I did mention a little bit earlier on, the PC guys, PCF1, uh, Cam and Fozzy, these guys are insane at what they do. They've got their own graphics set up. They've helped with a lot of the Invictus graphics and things like that. If you want a professional setup, you want to act and want to watch an IRL race, and feel like you're actually watching a real F1, go and watch a PC F1 stream on a Wednesday night. I promise you, you will not be dis These guys are insane. Dom and I try and watch every single week because these guys are as good as we are. We're not just saying this, guys. They are absolutely amazing. And then on a Thursday night, we move from equal to realistic. It is Tim and Malk that take you through the action on a Thursday night on the YouTube channel. 
Social medias. I'll quickly go through those because I did have to rush them again last time. If you want to get involved in the conversation on Twitter, at InvictusRL for the main Invictus account. If you want to hit the Xbox specific side of things, it is at InvictusRL underscore Xbox. And make sure you use the hashtag InvictusRL to get involved in the conversation. If you've got Instagram and you want to follow Invictus on Instagram, it is Invictus Racing League. And of course, the website, if you want to get involved and join our races, it is Invictus Racing League. Com. But the most important place for you to go and check out, because it is the central hub for all other Invictus races and our races here on Xbox once we have finished streaming, they will get uploaded to the YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash Invictus RL. Be sure to go over there, drop it with a subscription whilst you are there, and you can watch every single Invictus race from start to finish in its entirety from all of the leagues that Invictus runs. I believe some of last season's races are still on there. So you can even go back and watch Dom and, mine's, Dom and I's debut race. Can you remember when that was, Dom? Yeah, Belgium. Belgium last no. season. Was it not? No. I swear it's Belgium. No. It was Suzuka. It was. It was Suzuka. It was Suzuka because Belgium followed afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Suzuka. We I remember started, Suzuka now. We started at Suzuka, bro, because we did two streams that week. We did, we did do two streams. We did do two streams. And Andrew we and Matthew were, came along. Yeah, and we were very new as a pair to, to it then. And you can go back and watch that and cringe at how <laughs> horrifying our our first race was in comparison to how we are now. I mean, now we're at the chance where uh, that's not been set up, right? Oops. Um, guys? <laughs> Migrated host. I knew that was um, coming. <laughs> Mats? Oh. Mats? Mats? You broke Mats. the weather. Mats? Mats? <laughs> So this is basically what it sounded like in our first race, guys. But no, seriously, you want to go back and take a little bit of cringe at what we used to run, what we used to run um, in our first race. You know, neither of us quite knew what was going on. Um, we 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 both sort of. I I personally had taken a commentary gig prior to it, but not on Formula One. Um, and this was this is Kieran's first. First venture and migrating host. We are going to change again, Dom. Indeed, we are. Um, it was Kieran's first venture into uh, commentating, and he done fabulously at it, and is now possibly the greatest commentator on Formula One Xbox. I, I wouldn't go that far, mate. I wouldn't oh. go that far. No, there, I, I, there, I, I there think are, you. Um... I think you sell yourself a little bit short. Uh, a lot of people know your name, and a lot of people come back to listen to you. I mean, okay, okay. You can think of the big leagues where they've got their discords open to their fans as well, and there's, you know, three or four thousand people in the Discord server. I'm looking at you, Australia. Um, but I mean, for for EU where a lot of a lot of the racing goes down I, I'd say you're very well known in fact you're very well known over in the States as well um, which is a massive accomplishment so you know congratulations to, to you know growing from me and you struggling to figure out who was doing what on the first race to being a very 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 good commentator and strong in many 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 places um so yeah, uh, again, congratulations on becoming as big as you have. Well, I appreciate that. Right. Yeah. Okay, mate. We're just waffling. I, I can I Max, can guarantee I, that that's I, I an apology. Has, uh, I Iron Max has just apologised to us in the admin room going, Sorry guys, it's the first time I've had to redo a lobby. I've got it's fine, we're waffling on stream. It's all good. We're just talking. It's not a problem 
at or um, yeah, we're going to do something a little bit different tonight guys um, normally I would take you through the first few laps but Dom is wanting to get a little, more, a little bit more experience being a lead commentator so obviously it is me that's running the stream tonight but to start off Dom is going to watch the front well Dom is going to commentate on the front of the pack you will see what Dom tells me to put on screen so it's going to be a little bit of a weird one um, but it is obviously just to get Dom accustomed to running lead comms especially due to the fact that i am unfortunately not here next week um work has taken me away from portimao much to the sadness of dom so it will be dom leading commentary so he'll be running the stream next week and it will be andrew gatton joining up with dom next week in a cocom role so a massive massive thank you to andrew for stepping down from a lead role to allow dom to have the lead role next week in portimao these guys will work fantastically well together they are a very very strong team together but all of the guys that we have in xbox comms are very very strong and we have very very good partnerships together yeah i mean look at me and me and maggie uh Australia exactly. here. Perfect example. It was our first time running together at all, but the chemistry between us was so good leading up to that because we talk so much as a, as a group, as a commentary group, we talk so much that leading up to Australia, we knew that you and, and Andrew Gatton were going to be busy, um, unfortunately, so it was going to have to be me and him, and he kind of said to me, look, I'm not as confident taking this as, as you might be, so if you want to run it and we'll try our best and I mean, I I think we had a couple of things that people not not picked up on, but sort of like just said, look, we know it's your first time, so here are areas of improvement going forward. And some of them were simple stuff that we just kind of forgot about a little bit. Um, I accidentally got back to using the triggers because that's what I do when I'm on Cocom. I can just flick through with the trigger. Um, and that happened a couple of times. And there was a couple of times where me and, me and Matty overlapped, but um, I mean... It was for a small grid. It was very, very action-packed, and and that's what made it good. And like you said, unfortunately, you're busy this week. Uh, this week coming, sorry, next week. Um, and so is Matty himself. So it will be me and Gatton. Who is? It's funny. We've got a lead common, a stereotypical lead common, a stereotypical co-com sw swapping positions. As uh, I'm, I'm trying to advance myself so that for the likes of you know um invicts when something like the kieran and gatton being away situation me and matty can work well together and matty doesn't have to put that stress on him um it just relieves the pressure there a little bit and it's also a personal venture of mine as well to move move on a little bit and, and further my my career in commentary so it'll be uh it'll be very interesting to say the least and, and thank you for the uh Yeah, and you know, it'll be it'll be nice for you guys, and and again, it'll uh, it'll be an interesting one. But thank you to Andrew uh, prior to to next week for letting me run that um, like a, uh, that lead comp spot. Jamie, 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 throwing a little bit of shade there towards Iron Max in the admin chat. <laughs> he has he has message in our admin chat and has gone. It's dry, guys. Unlike last time. A little bit of a dig there at Matt's. Poor Matt's. We we love we love Matt's. Yeah, oh. Mac. Hopefully we have a good race, bud. Hopefully you have a good race. You you give us the entertainment and we'll entertain the fans. You know that. We are all good. So I've been told we are going to go at eight forty-five, guys. So we've got about another minute or so before everything gets underway, and we're going to have a formation lap, and then we will get into the racing, and uh, for a change. I'm not actually going to speak during the formation lap. No, uh, you are actually because Dom I do have do a question. Uh, we've, mm -hmm. I think we've, I think we've run the, um, the, the whole. This is where you can find us. But as you guys know, four streams a week, guys. Um, forgot the days. I am way behind on sleep here but they are monday monday to thursday we stream. yes monday tuesday wednesday thursday all of them start at 8 p.m you can find all of the ones on monday on youtube tuesday 
you've got them split between YouTube and Twitch. Wednesday, YouTube again. Thursday, YouTube again. Um, but Kieran, Kieran mm-hmm. it is now slightly later than our usual starting time, which means that I get to ask the question now because we didn't ask it in qualifying because qualif- everyone was out during qualifying. Someone was out at some point during qualifying doing something. Um, as you can see, the grid there beside you, um, what's your predictions for tonight now that Bot Shibble and um, Name has skipped my head again because he's new Chris to the league. Harry. Yeah, that's one. Seeing as Jibble and Harry aren't here, who do you think is going to steal the show tonight? Um, it's hard to look past the guys that are at the top. You and XHRC, two very, very strong uh, drivers in their own rights. Um, but I'm going to go a little bit out there. I think either of them are actually going to win. I'm actually going to back the person that's in the Twitch chat at the moment, FE Mac. He put himself on pole provisionally, um, but yeah, no, I, 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 th- I think he, I think Max got what it takes to win this. I, I'm willing to agree with you there, and I reckon Mars is going to get yet another podium. He's got the the track knowledge now, not just the track knowledge, but the racing knowledge, and it's really, really working for him as a driver. And like I said, massive congratulations to him for bringing himself up as in his consistency. It has really worked for him. Um, Nathan HRX is quite high up there, but he uh, he does he does struggle a little bit. Um, so hopefully he can uh, bring himself to a podium tonight. Um, but as we come round the Parabolica to end the formation lab, this is the IRL Xbox F1 League brought to you in partnership with GT Omega, Driver61, and GridFinder.com. We are about to go racing here in Monza. We are just waiting for those famous, famous five red lights that everyone knows and loves so much that can hold for so, so long or go out in the blink of an eye. And you just never know with the FIA. As Liverpool Ewan is lining up into his box, but XHRC beats him to it. Is that a sign of things to come? All of the top ten are on the soft compound tyre, so it'll be interesting to see who behind may get a better start on those mediums three four five red lights and away we go Liverpool you one's got a great start X got an even better start up the inside of turn one now remember turn one is quite dangerous it is a very narrow sharp turn one into a turn two and XHRC is not able to hold it just yet but it will go on as it goes and we've lost the driver I'm not sure who we've just lost I think it's Raza we have um, I haven't seen anything back there just yet, but there doesn't seem to have been any movement yet. But like I said, turn one is very much a dangerous corner. Um, but we will continue to keep an eye. Jamie 29X has seemed to have dropped a couple positions, um, but he hasn't looked strong, v- tremendously strong tonight. Um, Raza doesn't seem to have any damage himself, but you can see there that Liverpool Ewan has made a massive gap already, but Cyrus is really, really hunting down XHRC, the Alpine and the Aston Martin, two very different teams from two very different countries, very much wrapping their country's colours. Will XHRC be able to keep this down into the Parabolica? I think he's gaining a little bit. He is. Who's going to be the late summer breaks? It is not a Cirrus this time. Now, there really hasn't been much movement just yet. We're going to be looking for that in the next couple of laps when drivers settle in. There is a rhythm, especially after a, a lobby reset. Liverpool, you and fastest lap of the race so far, 123, but that is because he is the first person to cross the line. Jamie Turner next has a five second penalty for speeding in the pit lane. That is very unfortunate. Jamie, hopefully you can bring us off. Never mind, he is retiring from the session. Unlucky buddy, take it easy and maybe to see you next week at Portimao. A track that's a little bit more on the elevation side of things then this one feels a little bit more flat compared to the roller coaster ride thank you lando that is portamal vinny cousin in p8 now passes luke do and it was a very simple swap into turn four but luke do is still close enough to make it come back he's dropping down now 
Vinny Cousin has two and a half seconds to breach back into the DRS zone. And I have explained previously, in fact, if you go back to watch last season's Kota race, I have explained in depth how DRS works and why it is beneficial to the following cars. Um, but to see Luki do on those mediums, keeping a five-tenth gap, four-tenth gap now to Vinny Cousin is, uh, is very insane because he is on the soft compound. Now we're going to move to C. Actually, I think this could be... No, Iron Mats now is closing down on Nathan. Nathan HRX, again, like you said previously, has... Or like I said previously, sorry, has had a very stop-start season Ooh. here. Mats, yeah, I, I don't know about you, but Matt seems very Ooh. squirrely on the throttle there, Kieran. <laughs> you you, you want to... You want to sort of theorize about that one with me, because he's so, never usually like that. He's not, but you and I both know how dangerous turns. Whoa, we've had a little bit of carnage there through the Delaware. Oh, that's Seabus and Effie and Mac. Mac. It is. They've both dropped down a few positions there. I'm going to give you a chance to catch your breath, Don, because you were pretty solid there from the start of the race. And we'll give everyone a quick rundown. But we will, of course, first comment on the Ciros and FE Mac situation. And then we will go back to the Max thing. We did see that a little bit, must have been a little bit of contact there between the two drivers as they were coming through the De La Rocha chicane. And they have both spun and both fallen down. FE Mac a lot worse than Ciros. Mac all the way down in 13th place now, second to last. The last car running on track at the moment. Ciros is in sixth. Place. And we will now quickly go back onto the IRL Max thing. You and I both know, Dom, how dangerous Turn 1 is and how easy it is to mount that curb a little bit too much and it will send your car sideways. It does not mind spinning a car as IRL Max does now make that move on Nathan HRX up into third place. He's a lot smoother this time through that first chicane as they come up towards the Curve Grande now. Nathan HRX trying to hunt down mats i think it may have just been a case of his car may have also been in ever so slightly the wrong position to try and take that first chicane the last time round when mats did have that little squirrely moment uh, and oh, Matt just confirmed that is there joey in the chat. oh joey, joey yeah. caught too much of the um sorry to butt in there kieran um no jump in but um yeah, Joey caught too much of the um, the gravel trap, the kitty litter exit of the De La Rocha chicane of Turn 5. And as everyone saw, uh, I don't know if you guys saw it in the stream, but I personally saw it. And if you didn't see it and you do watch F1 in real life, you'd have seen it at Qatar recently, the amount of dust up into the air. Um, it did slow him down by quite some time. In fact, it slowed him down by three whole seconds. He was five or six tenths off of Raza previously but has now dropped a solid three seconds, which is unfortunate because he, he is a quick driver. He's just been very unfortunate so far this season. Yes, indeed. We have so got... Pikachu is a mover on Luki do and I don't know if that's excessive. We even Raza might take it that, but there's going to be an incident in turn one and two here, but who's going to keep it? Ooh, Luki do. I mean, Raza is going to argue that Sun Pikachu and... Luki do were weaving. It was technically classed as he could claim that it was intentional blocking, multiple blocking moves, and say that that's that's the result you get out of it. You're gonna continue to block me. You're gonna get a love tap, and it'll it'll depend how the stewards see that. Um, very competent to, steward team here, and everything gets posted, and the drivers know what's going on. Usually, I check it just to see what's going on, but I don't really report on it because usually. Usually it's kept quite calm and quiet. Is indeed. I'm going to comment on... No, I'm not going to comment on him. I'm going to comment on the car behind, purely because I don't want to wreck a certain someone's race. But when I mention the person that I'm going to be mentioning now, you'll know who I'm on about then. The DRS train from P3 down to P5. So, if you have a quick look at the position change, uh, because he has had a bar, Hubbard in the Alfa Romeo, up five places, and he is catching Nathan and Matt. Nathan is looking to line up a move on Matt into turn one. Not quite Not this level. Oh, who gets a bit of traction though? 
I think Mats is just going to wage it. Oh, no. Here comes Nathan coming back at Mats now. Is it coming around the Carver Grande now? Who's going to be the better? Who's going to be the braver of the two? Into the Delarosa chicane. Mats is slightly pulling away from Nathan. He's going to get close to under breaking, but it's not going to be enough to make that move on the Red Bull drive. And, and uh, the drivers stay where they are. Nathan stays in P4. And I will put my teeth back in so I can actually speak English. <laughs> I don't blame you. No, I, I think I know what you were looking for. The, the gap between uh, three and four and five and uh, the middle runner there is uh, he's up to and he's looking for that move on Matt. Um, Hubbardy is unfortunately caught just being dragged along with that DRS as uh, Matt does go slightly wide at the exit of Scari, but it's better to be drone as soon as possible. Over speed at that alpha though, under the stream Dom. It is, it's very tough here to defend. If uh, someone's got the right slipstream, the right ERS and the right DRS, even without the right DRS, if you get the right slipstream at the right time, it's very, very easy to pass. The problem I'm seeing here now, Kieran, you might be seeing it as well on the stream, but Hubbardy is flashing a red light at the back of that Alpha. Do you want to explain to those people into turn who, one. So, so the people who might not know about what that red light is, I'm going to get the view of a flashing red light on someone's car. I'm going to jump to Nathan's quickly. Anyway, so you can see the f uh, he's, his isn't flashing. It's not flashing, but not to it is um, the telemetry screen because, of course, it's not like to be put on. Let me see if I can find B. one. Oh, uh, there you go. If you can jump onto uh, Joey as he catches Lukey Do, maybe, maybe not. You might actually be able to jump onto Lukey Do, who's uh, expanding ERS quite quickly. Yeah, but you won't see it from his rear view. Will you? Uh, no, but if we get the, the right camera, oh, we've got the right camera angle there as it flies by. There we go. Yeah, you did. So you did just see that flashing red light under breaking into Ascari. We've got a yellow flag. Oh, who's gone round? It's uh, Seabrus out of the exit of Ascari. He's now under pressure from the Alpha Tower as well. But yeah, that that flashing red light is um, an indicator to other drivers that the car ahead of you is running low on their ERS. Now, that is only for this game. In real life, it is slightly different. It is usually designed to tell other drivers that the um, the car in front of you is either harvesting energy or is out of energy. Um, it's to warn you that the car is running slightly slower in a certain corner. Or, if it's wet, to let drivers know, hey, there's a 1,000 horsepower car in front of you here. It flashes other colours, but that is for different reasons in completely different circumstances that don't relate to F1 really much at all. Uh, more towards F2 drivers. Coming so. the moves, there has been a slight change of position. Nathan has made a move on that. He's up to third now, but here comes Hubba D. Matt does very well to defend that. He's going to look to try and line up and move himself into a Scari on Nathan. He does not. If they, as they are at the moment through the Ascari chicane there. It's quite a long chicane and I think Dom will probably agree with me here. Very easy to get it wrong. Especially the exit if you get the first part of it wrong. It's, it's easier to... It's harder to get it wrong if you set yourself up right. If you set yourself up into, into the first corner correctly then the whole thing will be a breeze. So Nathan, Matt does get that move done on Nathan HRX. But there is Hubbard. You can see how close he is to Nathan now. These guys are still battling with one another. I think this could be a race-long battle between these guys. And we have had some pit stops, Dom. We've had Vinny Cousin, Mac, and Raza all come in for their pit stops. Vinny put the hards on, interestingly enough. Uh, Mac has been on a set of mediums for three laps, and Raja has recently come in and put on a fresh set of mediums. We are on lap nine, and it is Liverpool Ewan that currently leads the way. 4.8 seconds, the gap between himself and XHRC, and then it's a further five and a half back. XHRC to Max. A we'll quick look at the penalty situation. Two drivers at the moment with penalties, Seagrass and Joey with penalties at the moment. But uh, 
When are you expecting to see these soft runs come into the pitch? Roz has already initiated the first the first line of undercuts um, by going on. He needs to bring that gap from 36 seconds to 24 to make any kind of impact, any kind of real impact um, with that undercut. Um, but I'd say if if we don't see someone come in this lap to initiate the undercut, and it could be someone like Nathan HRX or even Hubbardy. Hubbardy is someone who, in if I was in his position, I would be very, very mad right now. Not being able to get past, stuck in the DL. Siros just ahead on the breaking into turn one. Siros does just get ahead again of Luke Do. Not able to make that move just yet, but Luke Do is going to come back at Siros now through the curve of Grande now up towards the Delarosa chicane. You see Luke Do trying to line up that move. Siros does very, very well to defend through that Delarosa chicane. Oh, Luke Do has a little moment there. On the exit, does very well to hold it though, but it has lost him some all important time. He is just, just by about a quarter of a second, still within DRS range of C Ross. So he will have another chance to catch back up to the Aston Martin. The question is, will he be able to make the move before the pit stop stop? Because of course, C Ross is on the soft tyre, so we'll need to box a little bit earlier than. Lukey do as Seabrush goes wide on the exit of the Scari there and picks up another three second time. And there is your first move on for the undercuts. XHRC. Now that could be a good call. Um, he is far enough ahead. Um, Ooh, Seabrush. And if it's. If it. Unfortunately, it's not where I was kind of looking. Um, I wasn't expecting him to come in. Uh, the gap was slightly larger than I thought. I thought he might try to push just that little bit more to uh, to drop the uh, the gap, um, and hope that maybe that would be uh, sufficient enough to um, be a an attackable time. But unfortunately, he's come in with that massive gap, so he is now fighting to hold his P2. Whereas if Nathan HRX now was to initiate his his cut on on mats. Remember, like I said, it's lap 11, or not a lap 11, but 11 laps on the mediums. We're looking, and we've only got 10 so far. So, if Iron Mats doesn't lap, Nathan can and will initiate line of undercuts for the you know the net the the battle for, for I say provisional P2, um, because whilst they do have to pit, they will come back out behind Zeros. And, and just like that, like I said, Nathan HRX notices that Matt's goes straight on and calls it exactly Ooh. how he sees it. And Hubbardy follows him, Don, but picks up a five-second penalty for his troubles. I, I don't think Matt's was smart there. I think he's, he's tried to be a bit too brave, and it's not quite paid off for the Red Bull driver here tonight. And this could be his downfall. Something who has passed him now and is also closing at about half a second a lap, give or take, on Liverpool Ewan, who is on the... Ooh. There's our race leader getting a time penalty. That's something you don't see very often from Liverpool Ewan either. He's good at keeping his car in between the white lines. So it's very, very interesting that Liverpool Ewan has picked up a time penalty. 11 and a half yeah. seconds is the lead at the moment. Give you a bit of an idea of how much of a lead that is at the moment. Liverpool Ewan is coming up to the breaking point of Parabolica as IRL Max exits the Scari. So that just gives you an idea of how big the gap is. Ewan is very much on the right hand side. Ewan pits. Ewan pits from, P, uh, from P1 on lap 12. Does Max follow? Let's so I'm very lap. intrigued to see. Yes, he does. Max does follow. Which, like you said, he has. As to whether or not. Nathan has called that undercut on the right lap. Like I said, the mediums were catching the softs from what I could tell. Um, we'll see, Nathan HRX is just hitting the breaking point of the Parabolica now. Round the final corner. Matt, by comparison, is on his way out of the pit. Is Nathan going to jump Matt? I don't think he is. The overcuts work for Matt, Dom. It, it, it has, but it hasn't. I mean, 
the overcut hasn't gained him any positions. It's just helped him keep the position he's got. And you've got to think these these mediums don't just switch on the way the softs do. Um, they, they they take the time. Uh, they're designed Ooh, to go. see up the hidden side of Joey through the Delarosia chicane. What a move by him! Sorry to jump in there, Don. There's more. Um, you call him as you oh, see them. Nathan. And Nathan. Oh, Nathan. Oh, Nathan, a safety car, anything but that. But it's okay. There are still 14 laps left of the race. 14, 15 laps left of the race? 14 and a half, I'll call it. Yeah, 14 and, we'll call it 14 and a half left of the race for, for the middle of the pack. Um, Joey, again, still yet to pit. Subject to is net P1, but does have to pit and has in the blue in nine and a half seconds behind. So those softs are going to have to work through for some Pikachu, or it could just be settling for P3 or P4 for him tonight. Um, but yeah, the, the mediums are going to take their time to switch on, which means that if Nathan switch on before Matt's do, then there could be an interesting um, battle going here. They could indeed. Um, they are on the almost top. identical ERS as well, so it is even Steven right now. It is even Steven between these two, so it is going to be a straight fight between these two drivers now to the end. Uh, I'm going to comment on him because we haven't really commented too much on him. You commented on him briefly when he overtook Nathan when he pitted. But some Pikachu, he couldn't get himself in during qualifying was the unfortunate cause of the lobby restart because the game just decided you know what you, you're just gonna drive just drive around the track as normal in the wrong car so he started at the back of the grid but 13 laps there were 14 nearly 15 laps in now we're about to start lap 15 here in monza and he leaves the way down he does sun pikachu needs to change his game tag very much to silent but deadly ninja um he is fast methodical Ooh. and quiet no one notices he makes those moves you only realize that he is in the lead when you actually look to see who is in the lead after the pit stops and it's always some pikachu he always knows what strategy to bring and he just outdrives every other car without making any little mistakes he made a couple of mistakes at Brazil. No, no, not Brazil. Why did I say Brazil? I think he did make a mistake in Brazil. Oh, Aaron Max went really deep into turn two, and it is now all on for Nathan HRX as he gets the better traction. Will be able to follow closely behind. I know that the Honda is very, very hard to follow, and the equal performance cars are not easy to follow either at a small distance. It is not for this lap, unfortunately. I think Nathan might have got a little bit too flustered seeing Max make that unfortunate decision, so it's now still on the chase. But he, some Pikachu, going back to some Pikachu again, uh, as I, as I get as, um, what's the word? ADHD Animated? about this is possible, right? <laughs> Getting from one point to the next and then back to the other. Um, made a couple of mistakes at Silverstone, but still managed to bring home, I believe, a P4. Uh, made a podium. I think he came second, actually. I'll have to go back and check. Um, ready for next week, but, um... Ooh, Liverpool Ewan, gonna jump in, Dom. Move by Ewan on MCD Coda. And that is Ewan up into P2. And that will give Liverpool Ewan net P1 when Sun Pikachu pips. And that's how we can segue back to you talking about Sun Pikachu. Indeed. Uh, indeed it is. Indeed it does. That is a great way to segue. Um, wow. Well, Nathan, how about Ewan Raza? Nathan's round. Nathan is round. No, Nathan! I can hear the pain squealing out of your heart. I can I hear just it. I just want to see him get a podium. I think I this unwanted point. Record Everyone's got so a soft long. spot for Nathan. Uh, Nathan's also French, if I'm not mistaken, isn't he? He is. He is, he is a Frenchman in a French car that managed to do really well at the French Grand Prix. He did. I mean, talking about that French Grand Prix, Nathan was on for a podium then as well. He was on for a really, really strong result in that race. And unfortunately, it was a, I think it was another spin, if I remember rightly. It was his undoing there as well. 
does like to spin this little French car. Oh, Hobbity has managed to catch Nathan as well. That is unfortunate for Nathan. He has now got to fight oh, back against Hobbity. And that's almost, that is a quality time for some of these drivers. On the opposite compound with more fuel. Is Nathan going to be bringing that into Parabolica? They're side by side. He is. There was a tank touch, but he managed to keep it straight. He will have the DRS and Hobbity has no ERS. But Raza, potential double move by Mr. Podium. Oh, one's got one side, one's got the other. Who's going to be braver into the breaking zone of turn one? Nathan's going to have the inside line, give some space. Nice driving by these two drivers. But it is Raza, Dom, that gets the double move done as Nuki Doo and Joey both come into the pits down in P10 and 11, respectively. But Nathan is going to come back at Raza now. Into the Delarouche oh, chicane, Nathan's going to have to do it around the outside of the first part of it though, Nathan's had to use the runoff. He's had to use the runoff and that is going to hurt Nathan. He's lost quite a few positions there. Matt! Oh, Matt! What's happened to Zach. IRL Matt's dog? Oh this my gosh! could be vital. If that pulls a safety car. Exit of... It's not. Alexa of How? Two. That's a DRS zone. Oh, it is I not easy to, to move that car. I need to check something. Um, where am I going? Pull some flags. The safety car's on reduced. Safety car is on reduced here in Invictus. That would be why. Some Pikachu box. And it's come back I know, but I was P3. hoping that a safety car there would help. Um, would help some Pikachu with that pit stop. But he's now 18 seconds behind, and that gap may drop slightly. I don't think it's going to. But he is on fresh softs, and he's got about 10 laps left. Left now. Is it 10? No, nine. Yeah, 10. 10 laps. And you have to include the lap we're currently on, mate, because we are on lap yeah. 18. Yeah, so 10 laps completed. now to, uh, to gain 18 seconds. So that's, what, 1.8 per lap? About two seconds a lap, give or take, really. Um, which, on the softs, isn't the hardest thing to do in the world. Hmm. So look at Cyrus hunting down Hubbardy and Raza. Yeah, I did just notice that. I noticed that the uh, the icons were slightly closer together. Look through Parabolica, Raza is still leading though. Raza is only what ten seconds or so away from a podium. And Mr. Podium could continue his streak. Gonna jump on with Hamadi. He's gonna line up this move on Raza. Raza's gonna be braver into the breaking zone. There's contact. No. Oh, he's got damage. Oh, Double contact. Nathan's back into contention. There was big, big contact there between those guys. Raza got a little bit of contact, got spun round, and then unfortunately collected. Hubbardy as he was coming round to write himself back and Hubbardy's left the session without retiring his car. That's I don't think that's thing. intentional. You think that's a BC? Do you want to quickly invite over to him? Uh, him back into the session. Is it Hubbardy that left? It was Hubbardy. We are on lap 19 and we're just about to start lap 20 now of 27. This is the IRL Xbox F1 League brought to you in partnership with GT Omega, Driver61 and Gridfinder.com. We are on board with our leader at the moment, Liverpool Ewan, who has done Liverpool Ewan things really. He's just mind, minded his own business. Robert at the start had a pretty strong lead on those soft tyres from XHRC. Pitted, came back out. Worked his way back through the pack, waited for everyone else around him to pit themselves. And it's now back up into P1. Raza has picked up a five second time penalty for speeding in the pit lane. I don't think Mr. Podium is going to be able to continue his podiums 
here in Monza, which is a bit of a shame for Raza. Unless, of course, he becomes an absolute speed demon on these soft tyres. But it is a near 15 second lead now that Liverpool Ewan holds over XHRC. But some Pikachu. I was going to say, keep an eye on. Of a second place, Dom. Keep an eye on that Aston Martin. Remember, he doesn't have to gain the 14.8 to Liverpool Ewan. I forgot to take that into account. He only has to find 11. XHRC has realised that he cannot fight Sun Pikachu and will instead use the DRS to pull him around and attack Liverpool Ewan alongside Sun Pikachu. It's a smart little move and I think they've both managed to nail that strategy well. Unless XHRC makes a massive mess of it and attempts to move into turn one and causes an incident. No. Nice clean driving between the two. And you can see how close they are. You can see the better traction that some pigs you've got on the exit of that as the cars are coming through the curve of Grand Lane now. XHRC is still in the lead at the moment. Some Pikachu pulls to the right hand side. If he's going to make the move, he has to do it around the outside. These guys are getting so close to each other. Some Pikachu does back out into the Della Rosa chicane. So he did that. Because that would have been catastrophic had some Pikachu kept his car where it was. That was very much flashbacks from Monza this year when. Ooh, XHRC picks up a time penalty. Here comes some Pikachu with DRS assistance down the straight towards the Ascari chicane. Why can I not for life remember what that straight is called? I know it has a name. All of the, the, the different bits and bobs in this track have names. We do. But it's Italia. Can't okay. think of what the straight's called. So, if you're some Pikachu now, obviously you know you've got that P2. You've got to keep your mind in not getting a penalty. In fact, let me just double check to see the race director. <laughs> Dom's now going to see how many warnings some Pikachu has. I'm going to give you one guess. None. Oh, contact! XHRC went for a move up the inside of some Pikachu. He did get it through. It was a little bit aggressive. But He's given the position back as well. That is very from sportsman like. Little weave there from XHRC indicated to Sun Pikachu that he's apologised for his mistake and he is going to allow Sun Pikachu to take the position back. Very, very respectful driving from both drivers there, XHRC and Sun Pikachu. That there is what happens when you don't build your car right um, going into um, corners. So there's too much uh, king force at the front of the car and your rear tires lock up and all you do is fishtail around and it's tough to control and once it starts it doesn't stop um, unlucky for XHRC but can he come back from it? he can probably keep the podium if he fights hard enough yeah I think I mean in terms of some Pikachu regaining that position out of turn 2 that was that was like XHRC giving the position back. That's why he had that little weave. That was oh, just yeah, an yeah, that was an indication to some Pikachu there that he was able to take the move back. Um, but obviously we don't know how much of a lockup there was because we were on board with some Pikachu at the time. We sort of just saw XHRC appear on the right hand side of the screen, sort of out of nowhere. Um, oh, I I did Ooh, see um, I did see the lockup, and in fact I just saw the lockup again. <laughs> Can't make the move on Ciros. Maintain remains in P7 at the moment. Going to do something we haven't actually mentioned a lot of yet this evening, uh, and that is the penalties situation. Liverpool Ewan, XHRC, Nathan HRX, Luke Yudu, Joey all on three seconds. Hubbardy is on five. Raza is on eight. Ciros on eleven seconds worth of penalties. Don. If the race were to finish now, Ciros would draw up all the way down. To potentially P9. Uh, yeah, and if he drops down to P9, Vinny Cousin takes... That's weird, because Vinny Cousin takes that position from... Oh, if... Luke, you do up the inside of Ciros. He has made that move now. 
But look at the gap to lead off. We're going to add 11 seconds on there. It's going to be 47 seconds. So Vinny Carson will stay where he is. In terms of on track. I should make that clear. In terms of on track. Vinny Cousin will stay P10. Nobody has left the session and hasn't rejoined, to my knowledge. He also has penalties. Like saying that, Vinny Cousin will jump Hubbardy. Yeah, so Vinny Cousin will jump Hubbardy. All sorts and of then... confusion. Put it that way. <laughs> We'll put it that way. Of finish, all sorts of I've just figured out that Vinny Cousin should technically finish maybe P8. Because if he jumps Hobbity, that makes him P9. Oh, if... Raza again. Speeding in the pit oh. lane. Raza, it has been so unfortunate, my guy. That's what, that's what I was expecting. The fact that he'd come back into the pits again and sped into the pit lane was an indication to me that Raza was very much done with this evening, unfortunately. And it is going to be a retirement for the Ferrari. The Hammer 94, thank you for the follow, buddy. Welcome to Invictus. Hopefully you enjoy your time here with us on the IRL channel. We're going to quickly jump down to Siros, who's looking to potentially line up a move on Lukey Do. So. Probably down the main straight. We've still got that yellow flag because the game, the game has released Raz's car, which is less than ideal. But he will just pull off to the side, probably out of the curve of Grande. Or out of turn That's two about into this curve well, of Grande. Is Luki do struggling for ERS? And um, Cirrus has got about 25% left now. Um, the move could be made back into turn one if he's late enough on the brakes. He's not. He doesn't have quite the stones yet to do so. Still a feeling out process again this season for him. Um, I lost her again with a point. ERS making the move. Yeah, ERS making the move. Luki Doo and Hubbardy have both been very, very rough with it tonight. Uh, around the track where it's really hard to gain it back because there aren't very many breaking zones. So maybe from, you know, from racing here, it's, it's about time to um, take a step back and assess your races, see where you're losing that ERS, see how to affect more efficiently apply the ERS and maybe jump into a career mode and just do ERS management training because that's really really good to help as well. It's in the penultimate lap of the race now I see Rush runs very very wide out of Ascari. That's a line he's taking the majority of this race. It's really really struggling on the exit of Ascari then. He's running very very wide. It's where he's picked up the majority of his penalties this race. We are on the penultimate lap. Liverpool Ewan does lead by 14.1 seconds. So some Pikachu did make a little bit of an inroad into that gap, but not enough to be able to affect that Alpha Tauri. Of course, the man that I did pip for having a good race, unfortunately down in P11. A few incidents has, have caught him out, unfortunately, this evening. Um, one notable one, especially from in the chat. Uh, being collected by C. Ross and being spun, unfortunately, has uh, knocked him down to the back of the pack for F.E. Mac, and he has been in a losing battle since, trying to fight back. And I'm watching something that I didn't actually until now, Dom. Of course, we mentioned him when he did make that pit stop, and I was slightly confused as to why he'd done it. But Vinny Cousin... On those hard tyres for 20 laps. And if he can get close enough to Hubbardy. And in turn Joey. He could jump a few positions here. He could actually be on for maybe a P7. And depending on the penalties uh, that Luki do has. It could even be a P6 for Vinny Cousin. But we are on the final lap of the Grand Prix now. And uh, I don't think there's anyone relatively close to anyone else. So what we'll do is we'll stay on board. With a man who, I did mention him earlier, just minded his own business. It's what he normally does. Set himself up for a nice, good start. Oh, Vinny. Oh, there just it as comes. We mentioned him, just as we mentioned the fact that he hadn't got any penalties and was doing so, so well. He has, unfortunately, now picked up that first penalty. But if we look, I'm pretty sure he did start on... He did indeed. He started 
on pole position. Waited till everyone else had pitted before he did what he needed to do to regain that first position. He comes round the Parabolica for the final time and Liverpool Ewan wins the Italian Grand Prix here in IRL and it's a pretty convincing as win, a win as well for Liverpool Ewan. Oh, here some big you almost lost it. Going very, very wide out of the Parabolica. Oh. He does destroy himself as he crosses the line. He is fine. XHRC is going to pick up third. MCD Coda, very, very good performance from him as well. Some we've not mentioned really, Dom. He is going to come in and finish in P4. Oh, oh. no. Oh, no. Oh, no, Coda. Oh, Coda. Nathan finishes fourth. MCD Coda crashed out too. MCD Coda. Oh, no, Coda. He's tried to do the classic thing that everyone does, which is swerve across the line and wreck themselves as they finish. And he's done it too early, Dom. He's done it Effie too Mac early. Mac is not making it through that barricade. And Mac crosses the line to finish P10. Look at the car spread down the grid. <laughs> the carnage down the grid. And that's going to be an interesting I... one to look yeah. in Drive the... Um, <laughs> well, yeah, Graham for the day does go to some Pikachu, and um, yeah, I, I can I can kind of agree with the uh, agree with the game for that. I I wish not to because on the basis of the one time, the one time I don't pip that boy for a podium, and he gets it. <laughs> this is some Houdini stuff. <laughs> some Houdini going on in the background. Now, unfortunately, I do have confirmation that we cannot, unfortunately, cannot get Sun Pikachu in for the famous conversations that we have with him. But I am going to double check right now if it is possible to, and it is possible to get the other two ladies into the party. <laughs> As Dom's doing that, I will give you guys the quick rundown of the final race results here at Monza. It is Liverpool Ewan, your race winner for the Alpha Tauri, picking up the fastest lap as well. 16 points coming his way. Some Pikachu starting at the back, finished second for another podium place for him. In third, Nathan, 16 seconds away from Belinding and getting that podium. He was so close. So close. And their fourth place for Nathan. Luke doing fifth, Joey in sixth, Sierra seventh, Hubbardy in eighth. Vinny Cousin in ninth. Mac finishes in 10th because Coda unfortunately went to cross the line um, a little bit theatrically and um, damaged himself to a point where he wrecked before the line, which is less than ideal. And then, of course, we did lose Raza, Matt, and Jamie. I believe we have been joined by at least one of our podium places. I'm How did I score it. points? I felt it should have been a podium. Really upset about that. I mean, yeah, I can understand that, Mac. I can understand that, but it was GG, though. GG, though, mate. You did get your some points in the end, which is better than nothing. I believe we have just got the oh. one person in at the moment, and I'm going to... Unfortunately, by that response, it is just the one. one. It is going to be just the one. We've got no Liverpool Ewan this evening either. So it's just the one person. Be a nice quick podium interview for Dom the Noodle as he interviews third place driver, XHRC. Over to you, Dom. Uh, XHRC, if you can make sure your audio is included in the stream, that would be, um, that'd be awesome. Uh, just so we can get you on, get you here on the stream. Audio might be in or automatically included then. Mm, no, I can confirm. Unfortunately, it's not. If not, that's fine because I have the power of Voodoo, also known as a mobile phone, and can type up the answers to the questions.
So what I'm going to do, guys, is Dom is having a quick chat with XHRC. Unfortunately, we can't get XHRC's mic included. Um, so I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a chat until Dom is finished with XHRC. Yeah, I mean, I will you, obviously hear we weren't expecting um, expecting to see the pace that we uh, we saw from you tonight. That. Let me do that quickly, just because it's going to be easier to do it that way. Dom is having a quick chat with XHRC right now, guys. Once he has finished with that, we will get Dom back into the party, and he will then obviously be able to feed back on what XHRC has said. Fortunately, having a few technical issues in terms of getting driver's audios included in the party, so a little... A big, well, a big apology for that. I'm going to quickly just unmute the party and see if we've got Dom back. I know, it's it's been a crazy season. I mean, uh, we've seen multiple different winners. We've seen records almost be broken. Um, and some records have been broken. Um, obviously, with uh, going in now to Portimao, a track that, uh, it's been out for a couple of months and people have had time to, to prepare themselves for. Um, it's it's a track that requires focus. Um, do you think do you think you've got it in you to be able to... I'm going to quickly just mute Dom again. Oliver, thank you for the follow, buddy. Appreciate it. Welcome to Invictus. Hopefully you enjoy your time with us. Uh, my co-commentator, Dom Needle, is just having a chat with the only driver that we've got on the podium, which is HRC. He did finish in third place this evening unfortunately having his mic included his audio included sorry into the party so hopefully all being well very very shortly we will be able to hear from dom who is interviewing x hrc at the moment it's why you can sometimes hear dom's voice dip in and out us here on the stream for um showing a, an incredible amount of respect and to um, and on behalf of some pikachu and the league for showing the respect to give him the position that you'd taken from him um with a slight bit of a lockup um it's it's not very often yeah i i i caught it but i don't think you're in it um but it's it's nice to see when um there's respect to the drivers like like you did tonight and yeah thank you on on behalf of everyone because for them it does make our lives a bit easier thank, thank you very you much mate. congratulations XHRC. so i will feed back to dom now because of course he had had that chat with xhrc we were dipping in with the party so you heard a few of the little questions that dom did ask xhrc and but i will now get dom to recap what xhrc's comments were so dom back to you mate yeah, um, XHRC said that he um, he had, you know, he felt like he had a great race. Uh, that he, was, uh, he made a couple of mistakes um, that was costing him a couple of seconds per lap, and he realised that it did end up becoming damage limitation rather than fighting for P1. Um, he came in with next to no practice, and I mean, it's a track that everyone knows and loves, so it's not as hard. You can pretty much pick up a setup and go. Um, but yeah, he, he really enjoyed tonight's race. He did have a battle with Sun Pikachu at one point as well, and quite enjoyed that. It was a big battle, and like I, like you hear me say, it did end up in a bit of tears, but everything was fixed. He fixed it himself, he knew what had happened, and gave back what was... Um, um, so again, like I said, made respect for that. Um, yes, so he, he had a great race, and the, it gives him confidence going into next week um he said not only for next week does he have confidence but he's going to need to practice it's he's not raced it just yet um and since getting his new week he really really needs to try, um to up to that next level um he said it feels twisty and turning which i can vouch for it definitely is and there's a couple of spots in which you need a lot of downforce it's a very high downforce track for something that doesn't look like it so be very careful of some corners but he that he loves the idea of his second point finish in the season being at the back of I believe a DNS or a DNF one or the other. But second point finish 
it's his first podium of the season, the first podium on this game. I mean, it's not just a result from him, it's a result from everyone. Everyone turned up. There wasn't many drivers and they still gave us a show. So and congratulations to everyone else. Um, you fought really, really well to the bitter end and it showed how much you all care about Invictus. Indeed it did. Thank you, Dom. And obviously gave you a little bit of a, a little bit more of a free reign this evening, obviously in terms of Letting you lead a few little bits and pieces of the stream, so hopefully that will help you with what you are planning on doing, especially going into next week, um, where you will, of course, be leading the stream in my absence. But guys, this will bring us to the end of our broadcast here this evening. A massive, massive congratulations to our podium here in Monza. We will quickly recap that now. It was XHRC, whose car you can see on stream at the moment, in third. Sun Pikachu in second, and Liverpool Ewan was your race winner. IRL Xbox will be back next week, as I say, Dom and you through the action. In round 12, from the Portuguese Grand Prix at Portimao. But for more IRL racing action, head over to YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Invictus RL. Follow us on Instagram, instagram.com forward slash Invictus Racing League. On Twitter, at Invictus RL and at Invictus RL underscore Xbox. And if you would like to get involved in the racing, check out the website InvictusRacingLeague.com. But until next time, from myself, Kieran Wright92, and Dom the Noodle, thank you for watching and good night.